I got this as a gift when I was younger. I'm sure you've probably seen something like this before. It's got a whole bunch of different tools on it, like this screwdriver. Uh, it's got a corkscrew. It's got this thing. I'm not really sure what that's for. I'm sure somebody does. So it's got a lot of different stuff that it can do. But how good are these tools really? Let's take a look. I'm going to try cutting some paper with these scissors. See that this isn't going very well. And if I keep trying to cut like this, honestly, it's going to hurt my hand after a while. So let's put this down for a minute and take a look at these scissors that are only designed to do one thing, but they're really simple. It's essentially just two pieces of metal that are screwed together, but they do the job a lot more efficiently than this thing. So if we really take a step back and look at what this is, it's got all these different tools, but none of them really work that great. And some of them, I'm not even really sure how to use. So this is a perfect example of something that is over-engineered. I hate to say it, but this actually reminds me of the type of apps I used to design earlier in my career. You see, back then, anytime I designed any type of solution, I would try to cram as many features into it as possible because I always figured my business users would appreciate all the additional functionality. What I didn't do was prioritize the features that I was adding, and in some cases, I didn't even really think about whether they were creating any value for the organization or not. So I ended up with these over-engineered solutions that did a bunch of stuff, but didn't necessarily do anything really well, and they were also a lot more expensive and time-consuming to maintain than they would have been if I had just kept things simple. Now, this might actually sound familiar because we've all seen over-engineered software before, but let's take a look at what we can do to avoid that. Let's start with a definition. Simple architectures are clear, and they're also easy to read and understand. They can be maintained effectively, and they're planned and delivered with intention. And there are three main topics to think about when it comes to keeping our architecture simple. The first one is readability. And this has to do with making sure that you have good design standards and documentation. When you're ready to hand your solution off to an implementation team, they should have a clear picture about what it is that they're expected to build. Next up, we have maintainability. Now, to make your solutions more maintainable, you should start by opting for standard functionality and avoiding any unnecessary customizations. Something to keep in mind is that every single line of code somebody adds to your solution has the potential to create technical debt. And finally, we have intentionality. Being intentional involves things like creating roadmaps to give your stakeholders a clear view into the work that you're planning on doing and what your priorities are. This will help reduce the likelihood of a disconnect between the solutions that you're working on and your organization's overall vision. And being intentional also involves putting governance structures in place that will help make your prioritization and decision-making efforts more consistent across all of the projects in your roadmap. Keeping your architecture simple will make your solutions a lot easier for your current and future stakeholders to work with. And it'll also keep your maintenance costs lower over time as well. You can learn a lot more about the topics I covered in this video in Salesforce Well Architected. The link is in the description below, so make sure to check that out and make sure to like and subscribe if you found this content to be helpful. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.